So the purpose behind my call to invite you for a two weeks fishing trip to Southern Oman so uh, in my place. Southern Oman? Where's that? Yes. You don't know Southern Oman? No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just Google it. Google it. Uh, just uh, the, the idea behind that, because it's very rare that we have a fly fishing there, so you can come and figure out the fly fishing there. Yeah. So, um, Oman, where, like, is that in the Middle East? Yes. Nice. And so is it, is it safe or what, what, what are we going to experience over there? Of course it's too safe. It's the, for me, it's the most safest place in the world. Yeah. But yeah. what about like, what, like we have nothing to worry about. Like it's the Middle East. No, no. You, you will be in safe hand and safe land. Yeah. No worries about it. No, there's there's no like bombs and bad stuff happening. No, 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 no. Don't judge people based on assumptions. Ah. Don't believe the media. <laughs> Ali had extended his offer to fish with him in the Arabian Sea, the Indian Ocean, off the coast of Oman. I'd never fished there, never traveled there, and I'd never really spoken with anyone who had even been there. My name is Dana Lattery. I'm an outfitter fishing guide out of southern Alberta. Born and raised just outside of Calgary on a ranch. Played hockey, traveled a bit, and for the most part, stayed pretty close to North America. I've known nothing comes from anything but honesty. And honesty, I know, is the only place to start when you want to grow and change. I knew, sadly, that I had a litany of preconceptions of the Middle East and the people that lived there. Brown skin and religion. I have a gross tendency to paint those group of people with a very broad brush. I have a heavy dose of Western ignorance, or rather, a lot of what I know about the Middle East has been spoon-fed to me by a heavily subjective Western media, and I ate it. So if a trip is in the works, it's best to bring my tribe, to bolster the proverbial ramparts, to experience this thing together. All the laughter, the challenges, and all the fears. All these things mixed in a blender and made more intense, all to be shared under a communal fold. To coax, cajole, and entice Troy, Tim, and Steve, I told them about the GT. With pictures, large beasts, mythical and savage. Apex predators that strut through the ocean's meniscus like a cock rooster in a field of sparrows. And the Indo-Pacific permit, casting the golden-hued deities crashing crabs in the surf break. Elusive and schizophrenic, they act like a vegan being offered dog food. But oh, what a prize. What I didn't tell them was the fish they were seeing were caught on conventional tackle, and that the lodge we were going to stay at had very little experience in the ways of the nine-foot rod. We had a destination, and we had a target. It's a metaphor for this trip, really, and I found myself pondering it. Whilst we enjoy our Starbucks, we had to change our electronics. The problem? Oh, I can't charge my phone. I don't have the pluggies. I'm gonna go get one. It was a stark reminder that we weren't in Alberta anymore. The last time I had seen Ali in person was seven years ago, lying in the middle of a wheat field hunting geese back home in Alberta. I'm not sure what was more apparent, our apprehension or our jet lag, but something about seeing Ali seemed to erase it all. Even though we couldn't speak the language or identify with any of the signs on the buildings, there was a reassurance that everything was going to be okay having Ali at the helm.
Language of fishing. It's something that transcends the spoken word. Fishermen the world over recognize it instantly and will lunge with ferocity into its discourse. It's an excitement, a twitch of the hand, a gleam of the eye, a demonstrative mark of a limb. Boom. See? He did it. Fish lust. No, over here is completely different from anywhere, uh, any part of the world because over here GTs, they're everywhere. We cast from 40 meter, 50 meter to 5 meter to 3 meter. It's, we're not casting only on the rocks. GT over here is completely different because sometimes they're on deep water from 40, 50 to 35. Sometimes they're on the rocks. So we cast everywhere. So this is my dream I was waiting for. We had arrived and now spent the night going over everything in triplicate. It was a way to expel our nervous energy, to spell off the exuberance and the anticipation whilst being forced to idle. Preparation was done and action was its remedy. It was time to hit the water. It is, but it's on. It was a mob, surging the equal mix of unadulterated joy, laughter, and saltwater fish being caught for the first time. Wonderful and fantastic both. It was a great release. But where were the GTs? Where were the permit? Where were these fish that we flew halfway across the world to find? Over here is completely different from anywhere, any part of the world because over here GTs, they're everywhere. This place is completely different. This place you need to cast. Once you cast, you'll have your fish. Casting, casting, casting. If you need GT, you need have to cast. No relaxing today. We need permit. We need. He's coming at you. Yeah. Into the dark stuff. It's interesting, in a land as spectacular as this, and with all that we were experiencing, we felt so defeated and broken. We fought the tides, we fought the weather, we fought the time of the year. Our tunnel vision on GTs and permit has caused us to lose sight of the why we came here. It was time we recalibrated. What do you got for me? Lever. <laughs> Lever from where? From the sheep. It's always about people, 
It's always about seeing and experiencing new things. It's always about being vulnerable and open to a different perspective. To blast a part of myopic that had you deeply rooted to what's safe and secure. To enjoy the road as much or more so than the destination itself. Our time was quickly coming to a close in this beautiful place, and upon a recalibration with our why, we realized our agenda got in the way of receiving what this beautiful part of the world had to offer. Our hearts were opened and we were ready to receive whatever gifts Oman had left to give. As for GTs and permit fell short, we were going to be taking home with us something so much greater. The Omani people taught us to love on a deeper level and without prejudice. They taught us to observe without evaluating. They taught us that it's always about the journey and never about the destination. We will be forever indebted to Ali, this country and its people. Hard to describe this place, man. It's... Whew, yeah. I'm not ready for it to be over. <laughs> As Benjamin Button once said, it's a funny thing about coming home. Looks the same, smells the same, feels the same. You'll just realize what's changed is you. Jambo, Jambo Buana, Abari Gani, Muzuri Sana, Wageni, Wakari Bishwa. Oman yetu hakuna matata nix problem Oman Oman no problem hakuna matata Oman Southern Oman no problem welcome all of you <laughs>